Hi and welcome to Take Time to Create. My name is Linda and today we are going to create these little frame shadow boxes. I had a set of three that I found in my stash. They're from Prima Marketing and I love them. They're beautiful and they're, they're these little tiny boxes, but I just haven't used them. I found some old photographs of my grandmother and her sister, who is my great aunt, and I thought they'd be perfect for these little shadow boxes that I created. They are mixed media with paint and elements and all kinds of goodies. So I really love how they turned out. So let's get creating and I'll show you the process. So here's the box that we are going to work on. And I made one, a sample, and the next one we'll make is similar to this, but won't be exact. I did not adhere the little photograph down so you could see what we're going to do on the inside. And these are just the cutest little wooden boxes. And oh, this is a photograph of my grandmother and great aunt. And I love this photograph and I thought it needed its own shadow box. This box or wooden tray came from Prima Marketing and it's relics and artifacts and it was a package of three of these and these boxes are super duper cute and how they come they look like this and so we are going to decorate it you can nest them inside there's three of them you can do nesting boxes i'm going to make these separate and this is the largest size of the boxes and so the first step that i did to create that look is I painted the whole box with this folk art chocolate brown. So I'm going to stick a map underneath just like this so that I protect my work surface. And I'm gonna scooch this back just a hair. Oops, wrong way. All right, so I zoomed out just a teeny tiny bit. Uh, and then I have this chocolate brown and I'm running out in my, my little bin here. I use this brown a lot. All right. So, and just paint the whole box. Now you could prime this with some gesso if you wanted to. Uh, I didn't see a need for it. Um, it takes the paint just fine. And I just liked it this way. And we're just going to add more layers. So if you want to prime it with gesso, go for it. Otherwise, just go to town. And this is just the um, acrylic paint you can buy at any craft store. I'm gonna paint this whole box, this chocolate brown, and I'll be right back. And don't forget to get all of the sides and you wanna get the inside of the box. The back, I'm not worried about, but you wanna get all the sides, get the top here, and then get this inside too. Once your box is all dry, and my box is dry, and it's not perfect on the painting, but that's okay. Because we're going to take another color, we're going to take solid bronze and dry brush over it. Now, take whatever colors you have. If your photograph uh, goes with a different color, take that. I also painted, some letters that I had and I'm going to put these on the inside just like this box Oop, let me pull that out I used a heart and then this is letter I and these are bottle caps and another heart just to prop up the photograph so that it uh, isn't so recessed in there and you will see these like you can see the heart right there so while I had the chocolate brown out I just painted these because they're just wooden letters like this not sure where I got them. I think they're Prima Marketing, but I'm not 100% sure. But, um, so <laughs> is, that's, that's the biggest bummer about doing a low buy is I can't always remember where things come from. So I'm just putting a little bit of the bronze on my palette here, just a little tiny bit there. And I am just going to lightly dry brush over I want to make sure I can still see the brown, but um, you can still see this copper or this bronzy color over. Use whatever colors you like. My metal elements are more in this warmer tone family. If you're going to use a lot of silver elements, you might want to use something different. You might use a different um, paint color. So kind of look at what your elements look like and just match it up. So yeah, this is what I'm going to do. Now, a couple of these letters, the Q and the Z, you won't be able to see, but I need to prop up the photograph to be the same height everywhere, and I don't see myself using those letters too often in the future, so I thought they'd be great to tuck away. Now, if you think you're gonna use those letters, don't do that. You can always use cardboard to prop things up, but I had those, and I thought they worked really well. And I'm just going to 
dry brush this whole thing on all the sides, the bottom, the sides, the top, everywhere where I painted the brown, and I'm gonna let it dry, and then I will be back, and we will start decorating, which is always the favorite part. It's the most fun. After you get all the prep work done, I love to do the next step. So let me get this done, I'll be right back. So this is all dry now, and you can see the two colors, you know, just because I dry brushed that other one over, the brown color, and I like that it's got that kind of um, pattern look to it. All right, so now it's time to start filling in. And so my focal point are these two photographs. Um, this one's my grandmother, and this is my great aunt. These are their engagement photos, and they look beautiful. I just love these photographs. So this will be my focal point, and they will fit in, um, I think it has to go like this. So um, I kind of like that they're kind of looking at each other a little bit, just like that. And uh, so yeah, so what I'm going to do first is kind of place these in here. So I have a D for my grandmother's name, and then an N for my great aunt's name. So we have um, Naomi and we have Dorothy, and that's how it'll go like that. Um, so I'm gonna put some other things in here to kind of prop it up, like the Z, it doesn't really matter how it goes. The and will go here, uh, just like that. Uh, I have these little metal-y pieces. I think I'm gonna put them in like this. So first things first, um, I think I'm gonna glue these down and of course I'm using hot glue because that's what I love. Love me some hot glue, but um, gel medium would work just fine with this as well. Uh, I would use a clear gel medium or a gel medium that dries clear just in case it kind of sticks out because we already did the painting. If you were going to paint over it and then, um, you know, paint over it you know, with gesso or other colors, then you could do uh, an opaque one. Uh, that's just something to bear in mind, but I already have that base layer painted. I'm sticking with the same family for the metals, so I don't have to gesso over all of them. That's a pretty common uh, mixed media technique is you use whatever you have and then you gesso over everything and then paint over it at that point. Well, I didn't feel like doing that. That was, that was a lot of work. So I'm doing it the easy way. And the reason why I'm putting the D up here is because it just matches so well. Uh, the D would have been that rounded side over here and I just didn't like the way it looked. So that's why grandma gets to be there and her sister gets to be on the other side. Even though sister was older, but that's just the way that goes. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Oops, I forgot to put, I meant to put this down. Oopsie. Well, need to pry that up. Forgot. Whoops. Hmm. Well, I think it's glued down. I think I messed up. <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> I do that all the time. All right. Let me see if I can peel that off. Oopsie. Well, see the hot glue stuck down. This is not going anywhere. I meant to Put that in there. Hmm. My favorite thing about mixed media is adapting. Adapting to what happens. So we're gonna put a smaller little guy there and we're gonna love it just like that. Um, perfect. <laughs> perfect. All right, so we're gonna have that's how that's going to look. Okay, cool. And since I changed the way it's going to be a little bit, I want to put another little guy here. So play around with these as you go. Um, you want to make sure that it all kind of looks good together. Um, that, you know, kind of cohesive and I'm going to put, oh, I need to put the and in there, the ampersand, stick a little star there. I knew I wanted to do that. The stars are one of the Finnebar, um, Finnebar ones that are in her mechanicals line, which I love very much. 
So yeah, just kind of play with it. I had laid everything out before I got started and now I'm just kind of going to town. I might trim up their photos just a wee bit so you can see just a little bit more, but I'm not sure. We'll see. Uh, anyway, so I'm just gonna kind of speed it up and let it go so that uh, you can see how I finish this out. And yeah, this is pretty fun. We'll see what other kinds of things I glue down a little early because that's my hobby. <laughs> I like to glue early. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, let's get started. Let's, let's finish this up because this is really super duper cute. Right. So this is what it looks like with all of the metal pieces on and I'm loving it. So cute. The next thing we're going to do is um, we're going to add some wax and I'm using the Finnabar and it's vintage silk and this is one of the Opal Magic colors and the nice thing about this is that it will really show up on dark and um, so I just have a like a stipple brush and I'm just going to warm it up on my hand just like this and I am just going to highlight around and yes you can gesso and probably that's a little better to do um, but I'm not too worried it dried just fine when I did it on my sample um, I just <laughs> I just go to town um, I really love these waxes they are so beautiful um, they work really well if you warm them up on your hand. Uh, it just has them go really well. And I am just kind of adding wax everywhere. And all I'm doing is just adding it as a highlight. I'm not covering up everything because I just want to emphasize the tops of things. Let me bring this up close so you can see what I'm doing um, as I go just like this. And you can see how that just um, brings out the color just a little bit more. And I really love the way it looks. And I am going on the wood as well. And I got a little too much on that guy. All those little holes on that guy. I got a little too much, but that's okay. We'll wipe it off. And even though I couldn't stick my original filigree little piece where I wanted, it's not a big deal. I think it still looks really good happy with how it turned out. That was a happy accident. And that's the whole idea of mixed media is that you just kind of go to town. You just play with what you have. And if it's not perfect, that's okay. And this wax also brings the, together the, all the colors because I am using um, a variety of colors. Not, not silvers or anything like that, but I do have some different colored, warm colored things. And uh, this just kind of all brings it together and makes it one cohesive mixed media piece. And that's it. Let me bring it up so you can see it. Look at that. It's not pretty. It just adds that nice detail. It's exactly what I needed to add. Um, so now we're going to adhere the photographs. Let me, let me clean my hand off because I don't want to get my photographs all messy. <laughs> yeah. I am speaking from, from experience. So wipe your hands, clean them off. You don't want to get the wax where you don't want it. Um, and then you let the wax dry because once it's fully dried, it's not going anywhere. The photographs, you don't want to adhere the photographs with hot glue because that will um, heat up the photograph and it's going to change it. And I learned that from experience as well, so don't do that. <laughs> I have um, just heavy gloss gel, any gel medium. You don't need heavy, but that's just what I had within arm's reach. And you don't need a lot, it's just paper. And I'm just gonna put just a teeny tiny bit um, up here in the corner because that's really where I need to put it. And I'm gonna put a little bit on the Z and that will be all it needs. It doesn't need a ton uh, everywhere because well, like I said, it's just paper <laughs> and got to make sure I put the right person in the right spot. Okay, grandma, you 
are going to go right there. I love seeing photographs of my grandmother. She passed long before I was born, and I just love seeing photographs. She's a beautiful woman. I did know my great aunt, uh, that's her right here, and she just passed this year, or in March, so a year ago almost, and she was uh, 97. So I did get uh, quite a bit of time with my great aunt. Um, so that made up for it a little bit, not having my grandmother, but uh, yeah, just it's neat to learn about somebody through a photograph. It's neat to um, just to learn about them that way and to see their beautiful photos. And they just look lovely, both just absolutely gorgeous in their engagement photos. There we go. That's it. I'm done. Now how to hang it up. I'm not going to flip that one over. I have the original one that I did, but I have not adhered this down still. To hang it up, you can add one of those little um, hanger things, like we, you nail it in and it's got the little claw teeth on there, and do that up toward the top where there's room. Or I'm just going to use um, Velcro command strips and just stick those on the back and then just stick it up on the wall. Um, you could prop it up if you planned ahead. My butterflies are sticking out too far down here, so I can't prop it up in my flower too, so it kind of gets in the way. But if you planned ahead and you kept everything off the bottom, you could just stand it up just like that. And so while we're here, I'm gonna finish out this one too. This adorable picture where they are in the woods standing there. I don't know what they're doing, but they're doing something. Then they're just cute as can be. Okay, there we go. Oop. There we go. So there we go. Those are my two, let's do it like this. Those are my two little frames. I still have one more frame left and that's this size. It's the middle size, but I didn't have a photograph or two photographs that fit well into this one. So I'm saving this for another project. So you will be seeing this again this year. And that's it. We're done. Aren't they cute? These are going to look great on my mantle. So pretty excited about that. Thank you so much for watching. I really enjoyed this project and I really love using old photographs, especially when they're people that I know and their family members. But if you don't have uh, pictures of family members, there are tons out there on the market. I know a lot of artists and brands are publishing old photographs that you can use in your art and they're really great. And I do love those as well. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and on my blog. I have two Instagrams. I have Take Time to Create, which is all my crafty goodies. Uh, it's up close photos of my craft projects and behind the scenes and on my work table, all those good things. I also have Linda's Journey 78, and that is uh, my personal journey. It is vacations, it's family, it's all those other things. Feel free to follow along on both. I would love to have you. I have a blog and Facebook as well. All of the information is in the description box down below. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. Thanks again for watching and I will see you guys next time.